on stage with Energy's AD Carey. Thank you very much, Riv. What's up? Alltech is here with me. 2-0 start to the week, by the way, you guys, in first place. Uh, tell me about your expectations coming into the week. 2-0 was expected? Um, it was pretty expected for us. I think just the first match, because we had to play with subs, so it was kind of iffy and up in the air. But now that we're 2-0, um, we're pretty happy with it. So talk to me about sort of bringing this team together, because to my knowledge, like pretty much none of you guys have like played together until this team comes together. Like what was gearing up and getting ready for the season like? Um, I think the team, like I, the biggest thing we had was to bootcamp in Korea together. And I think that really like helped us because it like just taught us how to like play vision, and just communication a lot better. Well, then I want to talk about that bootcamp in Korea because uh, I know Renegades went over there as well. Uh, I assume you guys played them at least a little bit while you guys were over there. So did this matchup kind of go as expected as well? Um, it's hard to say because, like, let's just say we it was like one month ago and it was on a different patch. So um, we can't really say, but I think I think it was to be expected to be expected that we win this match. So. And you guys did really well. So then uh, moving on then to sort of your team dynamic and, and the big players. You've got a lot of like really big all-stars. You've done very well over, over in the LCS so far. GBM coming over from Korea. He's been awesome. Impact's got a lot of hype around him, former world champion. You have like all these big stars. Like how does that sort of affect the team dynamic? Do you have to like find someone to play around or is everyone like really chill? Um, I think we're pretty chill. Like if like everyone's willing to sacrifice, like let's say if someone wants to, if someone is able to carry, then we give resources to him instead of like, oh, like I must need a carry, so give me all the resources. So everyone's very versatile. That's really good to hear the team so versatile. Altec, thank you very much. Congrats on the 2-0 start. We'll see you next week. And we're going to see the analysts have to talk about the game some more. Thank you, Freak. Energy with their full roster there, picking up another win. So 2-0 on the week. It's a great way to start. But I want to start in Champion Select because we saw them throw out somewhat of a suspect maybe two support bands in the Alistair and Thresh against Remy. So a lot of respect there for her two, uh, the champion she played yesterday and then the, the Thresh, which she is known for. Thoughts on that though? Uh, when I think about those two bands, I definitely think that these are the best champions in Remy's pool, but they had a purpose. They weren't just saying, oh, she's a really good player, let's ban her out. It was she is the source of RNE's engage. Right? The Callista combo with her yesterday was what made those fights start. So now you look at the composition that REN drafted, where's the engage on this, right? It's the Morgana pick, and then what they ended up doing on energy side was they drafted four pick champions. Trundle, you have single target, uh, lockdown with Ari and also Elise. And so these are champions that if you have engage and you're able to engage on them with some hard engage like an Alistar and lock them up, they're gonna get deleted very quickly. So I like those takeaways so that they can run this split push composition and not worry about Renegades engaging on them really hardcore. And also in their first round, they took Callisto away too. But at the same time, Morgana's kind of the champion where it's like that middle ground. And so when you look out, when you throw out these Elise cocoons, these Ari, charms there's always like the morgana shield the morgana bind there's still kind of like the half and half there it does kind of take away from the full-on engage like you said but it's still not like a we banned these champions so we're going to win the game it's more like a ban where it's like she's very effective on these champions we should take them away it's not going to like win us the game but what else are we going to ban Right, and then of course it results in uh, the leaving up of the likes of Mundo and Rise, which were picked up. And I mean, at least Rexai, there's actually still a lot of power that was left on the board in banning these champions out, as opposed to throwing out a Soraka ban, you know, throwing out the Mundo and the Rise to begin with. So having these targeted bans is something we haven't seen too much of uh, recently, but of course, it must have been, it was effective. Energy comes away with the win. And this is where I want to kind of transition to the fact that we've seen the full lineup, Impact and Moon now in for Energy. So final first impressions of this, you know, roster. Impact, experienced top laner. We've seen him before, but now in his full lineup. I mean, this guy has no shortage of highlight plays in his career. Yeah, he gets an early kill down in the bottom lane, and then he starts snowballing on this Fiora that he got to counterpick the Mundo with. And then he starts running away with the game and just picking on RF. Yeah, RF kind of showed a little direst mistake there where you kind of overextend with all the creeps and then not letting Alex H do all the damage he needed to do and barely gets away there. 
And once again, now he starts dueling Alex, who is the highest level person in the game at this point. But Impact plays this fight so well. And this just shows that Impact, you know, he was a split push threat back on SKT, right? There's an SKT Jack skin for a reason. And he was actually able to push it through, right? I think that this is a really, really uh, great thing for him because now he'll be able to play these split pushes instead of being in engaged duties, playing Maokai and stuff like that. Right, absolutely. And, it, you know, it's... It's a terrifying thought that you're willing to 1v1 a rise that's higher level than you. I would never want to do it, and yet he has the confidence to do so. And when I look at that roster, the veterans, GBM, and Impact, who are lauded as very good players, Alltech, you know, still on his way up. They have a lot of backbone in that team. And then you have, you know, the newbie in Moon, who kind of gets to come along for the ride, and we'll see how he develops throughout the season. But... Even with all of this, we saw that the game was relatively close throughout the majority of it. It wasn't until 28, 29 minutes into the game that it really blew open in one large team fight around the Dragon. I kind of want to walk through that because it was a pretty explosive fight. Impact did have a pretty big part in eliminating Freeze in it. Yeah, and this fight ends up being basically the straw that breaks the camel's back. It's pretty even at this point. They're clashing back and forth. But then what happens is the kite backwards from energy leaves Renegades to go into the left side. They need to meet up with Alex and then that gives impact a really great angle to come in Because it's a four on five here and energy are on the same page at the start right on the minimap here You can still see Fiora coming across the front of the dragon pit not even there yet now She's entered the fight. Yeah, it was all about buying time too, right? The Zanya's just to make sure that he gets in right at that moment and he keeps everybody occupied It kind of looked like a fight where it was like Alex each was flanking, but they were taking aggro on Dragon, and then, you know, it looked good, and then once they hit that choke point, they just threw out Trundle, Pillar, Ari Charm, Elise, and then Impact finally flanking in. So they got really, really low from the Dragon, and it just, you know, turned out that way. When you get clumped up, and you can't run the other way, so you only have to run one way into the death zone. Yeah, Dyrus, we had some conversation during the game where you had some criticism of, uh, something that a lot of teams struggle with in that uh, they, the decision making around Baron, for example, as an objective, or in this case, Dragon, maybe over committing because they felt as though as soon as they see the other team in a misposition or heavy, heavily allocating resources to one side of the map, they feel the only option is to go for the Baron as opposed to maybe pushing a lane. Do you feel like, you know, when you, when you analyze Renegades as a team that their greatest weakness as of right now, or perhaps the thing they can improve on the most is in that shot calling realm where they're maybe over allocating resources to a global objective that then puts them in a situation like that where they are able to get picked off? Um, I don't think it's too much of a weakness, but I think it's more lack of experience and going into solo queue. For example, in that game, we saw that we saw two people go on Alex each on the bottom lane and their immediate response was they made a decisive call to go for Baron. Although the problem with that is they still have three other people on the map and the jungler can 50-50. The correct thing to do is to pressure lanes or to give pressure back to your bottom lane. So what you want to do is you want to take control of the middle of the map. But instead, what happened was they went for Baron, and the enemy three, just, just because they attacked Baron, they got control of middle, and so they lost a whole bunch of pressure. But by going middle, if your tier twos are up, you want to be you know, playing to get as much pressure as vision as possible. You don't really want to start Baron unless their jungler's off the map, unless you have like tons of vision, their tier twos down. Like There's so many things to consider. And, um, they just got punished for it. So some things to learn for Renegades. A solid win, though, for Energy, closing out the week 2-0. We're going AFK while our next two combatants, Team Dignitas and CLG, load onto the stage. Don't go anywhere. Our spring coverage continues after this. It's like, it's like the, the pitch and timber of his voice. Just Your voice is too microphone. sharp. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my, oh, god. My god. oh my god, he's literally, he's like big brother. I'm tilted. So the engage comes in from Crumbs from the brush, Alltech uses heal, teleport behind Freeze, but there's another teleport, so he feels safe to stay. The first kill goes onto Alltech with Alex standing still and Impact not able to get around to get any more battles, but he finally does! Lucian, 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 Lucian! We get back! Good job, good job, good job. Very, very oh, hard. Freeze. They push him off the turret. They don't even want the turret. They just want kills right now. Energy is going to go 2-0 in the first week of the spring split.